Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee. May God's grace, peace, and mercy be present for you today and throughout this entire week. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on the fruit of the Spirit, and we're diving back into the very deep topic of peace. If you haven't watched the previous two episodes on peace, go back and do that now. And in fact, you can find a link to that as well as this entire series in the description for today's video. We're going to start exactly where we have every week with our key scripture, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, where Paul states, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now last week I mentioned that we were going to talk about today a way that we should be having shalom peace in our lives, how we could have that shalom peace, which I'll from now on refer to simply as shalom. But to do that, we first need to step back and break down some misconceptions that we have, or at least a misconception. We're going to go to Matthew 10.34 to do that. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, how is it that our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, is coming to bring a sword? I think that what we need to understand, we've got to go back again to the original languages and understand what is being said. The ancient Aramaic scrolls here use a different word for peace in this passage. It actually uses the word Sena, not Shlama. Now, Sena is a different kind of peace. Sena means peace or tranquility. Now, if we go to John 14, 27, we will see Jesus addressing this himself. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Now that is a shlama peace that Jesus is talking about. And he's being very clear that it's not the same peace that the world gives. And then if we go to John 16, 33, we see Jesus saying, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. So Jesus here is saying that we are going to face tribulation in this world, but he has overcome it. He is stronger than this world, and in him we have shalom or shlama, peace. Now, we're not tribulation free in this broken world, but how can we live in that shalom or that shlama peace in this world, in this broken world? Let's go to Colossians 3, 2, where we will find the answer to that, I believe. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on this earth. Now, if we have our minds set on the things of this earth, we are not going to have that godly shalom. But if we set our minds on the things that are above, the things of God, we will have that godly shalom. Jesus, in fact, addresses this in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Now, for the sake of time, I'm only going to read verses 32 and 33, but I encourage you to read that entire passage. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is powerful. If we're seeking the kingdom of God, we will have all these things, this shalom peace added to us. And we see this addressed in Philippians as well by Paul, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Paul states this far better than I ever could have. If we rejoice in the Lord, we live honorable lives, and we bring our requests to God with thanksgiving, then we will have that peace. And don't worry about the rest of it, because if we're focused on the right things, then all will be well. This, my friends, is the key to having shalom in this life, to live our way, our lives in a way that is worthy of the glory of God, to live our lives as if we are living in God's kingdom, which we are living, not living with our focus on this earth, on this world, but living with our focus on God and his kingdom. Now be sure to join back next week because we're moving on to the next attribute, which is patience. This is another powerful lesson as we learn more about the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, the world is your mission field. Now go out and reflect Jesus into it. Mm -hmm.